This episode was brought to you by Autograph Events, our sponsor. Come take my hand, I will walk with you. I will let go till you say so. Welcome to the Quoty File bonus episodes. And our first lineup is Annie Croner. Thank you, Annie, for joining us. We're so excited to be able to share the knowledge on this YouTube channel. So um, great. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you, Annie. Please do tell us all about yourself, what it is you're currently doing and how you align with the assistant community. Thank you guys so much for having me. I love collaborations like this, and we're going to go into that in another avenue at some point. But um, my name is Annie Croner, as Jody and Craig just said, and I am an executive assistant coach. So I help executive assistants unlock their badassery and really level up and become more strategic business partners. So um, I do this through coaching. Uh, I run a group program. I have one-on-one clients as well. And then I also do this through training and then via my podcast. So Crody Files, I'm a big fan of. (laughs) My podcast is called The Whole Assistant Podcast. So please check it out wherever you listen. And so that's a bit about me. I am a career executive assistant over 20 years in the industry. I had this crazy opportunity to go into business full time for myself a year ago. I did not see myself actually going down that path, but here we are. So I'm loving it. I'm loving empowering assistants. I'm loving helping assistants um, really come into their power at and in, into their roles uh, fully and um, to love their roles as well. Excellent. That's really interesting that you 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 just landed in this position just a year ago and how quickly things can progress through the power of networking collaboration and and here we are yeah so we have as you know we have the crody files has an initiative to get the listeners involved and we call that high crody so it's a little bit like a um a chat show agony aunt at the PA show recently, we were um, described as the doctor's surgery for executive <laughs> assistants, which I love that. Um, so we have had literally thousands of different questions um, phrased in different ways, but generally they're kind of grouped into um, topics. So we invited um, you, Annie, to come on and chat through one of our listener questions and this is a real hot topic still at the moment it's been going around for maybe a year and we're just wondering if you can help us unpack this question with your expertise and um, insights so here's the question from a listener anonymous hi crody i want to shoot for a chief of staff position from an ea position of 12 years experience There are a lot of options out there for learning and development courses for chief of staff. Are any of these worthwhile? Is there just one that really packs a punch? Do they matter? Do they count? Will they help me get a foot in the door? Please help. Annie, (laughs) what do you think? So I actually get this question in terms of different iterations, in terms of different certifications out there for executive assistants. And now there's this whole other realm of chief of staff that we're adding into that. Of course, there are chief of staff development programs and things like that. And there are a couple I would recommend. However, my question back would be, what is the purpose of taking a chief of staff course, of of taking a chief of staff certification, anything like that? Um, So my philosophy, I'll just give you my my general philosophy, philosophy on certifications in general and then we'll, we can like dive into the chief of staff yeah. role because we could really unpack this this could be a very long episode <laughs> <laughs> but I know we're wanting to keep it brief so with any certification I'm, I'm a big fan of certification as long as you're looking at at it as a learning and development opportunity for growth your own personal growth now this goes for coaching certifications as well I'm a certified life coach <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and so I will say that it's completely possible to be an effective coach without any coaching certification, 100% possible. And so I think the same is true for executive assistants in their roles and chiefs of staff in their role as well. You do not need any certification in order to be an effective chief of staff, nor do you need a certification in order to be an executive assistant. There are instances where certification can help. Project management is one of those. So if you want to move for a 
from an EA position to a, a project management position, and PMP, the PMP certification is required for the role that you're applying for, that is one very specific instance where having a certification is, is helpful because it's actually a requirement of that job posting. Now, even there, most project management roles do not require certification. So if you're hanging your hat on getting a job and you're hanging your hat on the certification helping you land a job, I would say that's not the motivation that I would support in certification. Mm -hmm. The motivation in my mind should always be linked back to your personal growth and whether or not you want to unpack or discover something about the position or figure out where your skill set may be lacking so that you can fill in some gaps, that sort of thing. So do they count? Do, 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 um, Chief of Staff certifications count? Yes, but only in terms of your professional development. I don't think a Chief of Staff qualification is going to get you a role. No, and it's important to, yeah, it's important to just pause there and, and reflect on the process because we talk about adding value and showcasing your skills. If you're shooting for that position as an EA and you've had 12 years experience, my question would also be along the lines of, you know, what do you want out of it in terms of are you just shooting for the chief of staff role because you want personal growth and you just want to get from, you know, A to Z really quickly or what steps have you put in place to get you in the door without those certifications so what social proof what internal proof what proje uh, projects have you been on recently internally maybe in your organization if it's an internal promotion or what value can you showcase maybe at the interview stage to say I don't have a certification but here are the the examples of the projects that I've been able to deliver that have turned X around for the organization and put in the actual meat on the bones, as it were, to your skill set and how that translates to your experience to then be qualified to apply for that chief of staff role. Um, I think we're moving away, particularly in the UK, I'm seeing a lot more job ads removing that need for university um, qualify um, university degree educated it's not necessary and if you have worked on your like we've just learned recently Craig your personal <laughs> branding you know what yeah. value are you bringing to the role how do you show up how do you speak up how do you lead are you an executive assistant or are you at the other end where you've moved through that and you're into the strategic executive assistant going going into uh, a more high level role position and leading internal projects because ultimately that's what you're going to be doing in in a chief of staff role is really managing the internal business goals liaising directly with the chief of, um the ceo the direct c suite so there might be a step in between i'm thinking with this what do you think craig yeah, I think so, too. And I also find that you have to have the passion for the role. I mean, people sometimes just want to get in and get out and get their paycheck. But I love this role and I have the passion for it. So going for all those education and your courses that you're going, you want to have that drive and that passion to be able to retain that information. If you're just going to do it just because you want it on your CV and you just want the, you know, the letters behind your name, I think it's it, it's going to be difficult. What do you think, Annie? I definitely think that's true. I think that doing things for vanity, like at a vanity, you know, it's, it, it kind mm -hmm. of is like a vanity metric, having that COS behind our our those initials behind our name. And mm -hmm. I was a very high level executive assistant in my last position to the point where I was operating as a chief of staff, but my title was executive assistant because we were a small organization and I was supporting one high level executive, <laughs> my managing partner, and the other managing partners also had support staff, but they, but they worked differently with their executives, right? So executive assistant made sense for the organization. Now I was doing the work of a chief of staff 100% for sure. I was like, running this guy's entire world. <laughs> so wow. I think you really have to break it down. Like, are you going after chief of staff 
for the title or do you actually want to sink your teeth into those higher level, level projects? Do you actually want to do the work and does the title matter to you? And look, I'm all about us getting recognition. I'm all about us having a title that suits our role. But at the end of the day, I'd be more concerned about job fulfillment than I would mm -hmm. about it. So yeah. where are we going to point this person then? So I think generally what we're saying is education is key. Personal development, professional development is key. But there is not going to be a magic pill for this um, chief of staff role, particularly when it means different things in different organisations, across different sectors, across different countries. It can mean one thing here, another thing there. Um, I would look more into the job description of that COS position. Does it sound like the next natural step for you compared to what you're currently doing? Does it seem way off? If it is way off, great. So what are the steps you need to put in place for the next couple of years to get there? Um, but there isn't, I, I wouldn't recommend one single um, learning and development course. I would recommend that it, in whatever you choose to seek out and pay for, it encompasses many things, you know, commercial awareness, project management, um, what else, financial awareness, all those things that matter with it, having a great business acumen in general, being able to lead, being able to communicate effectively, being able to um, deliver your projects on time and being prepared, I guess, the main thing to step away from the traditional EA responsibilities. I don't know how Craig would feel about not booking a restaurant ever again. <laughs> I, 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 I love doing that. <laughs> I like doing that as well. But I think it also comes with experience. I think the longer you're in the position, the more um, uh, reaction you are with being, being a chief of staff, with the EAs. You know what they are going through what the trials and tribulations they were going through because you you were there and you grew from that into the position that you were in. So I um yeah I would like to have be, be a chief of staff, but I do like being an EA, and it's so it, something needs to drive me to be able to want to step to that next level. But at the moment, I'm happy where I am. Yeah. Yeah, and it is a it is kind of a mindset shift too. Like if you're okay. so used to being in the weeds and doing all the tactical to dos and mm. and all of that, like it's gonna be a huge mindset shift to show up more strategically. Like I walk my clients through this all the time in their executive assistant roles, let alone COS, you know. So that's that's a real challenge too. So then who do you have to become in order to be a COS as well? Like what are you gonna have to let go of? <laughs> and then what are you also going to have to onboard? You're going to have to onboard a whole new belief system about yourself. You're going to have to onboard a whole new strategic way of thinking. You're going to have to let go of your executive's calendar and give that to the EA. And that's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it will. That's great. That's excellent advice. I hope we've answered our listener question to the best of our abilities. It is a very vague question. It's mm. not a straightforward answer because you really need to get into the nitty gritty of that job description you're you're shooting for and make it work for you. But in the meantime, don't give up with your learning and development. Seek out professional and personal growth. The two must align um, yeah. and keep learning, keep absorbing information and let us know how you get on. This episode was brought to you by Autograph Events, our sponsor.